we have been presented with a dilemma. Ordinarily on inside the hatch, we'll find good intact vehicles to show you the inside and outside. We've kept that rule up until now. However, we're in Kubica and well, there is no inside in this vehicle. So as a result, I guess we're just gonna have to show you most of the outside and we're gonna have a slightly modified version of the show and we'll call it outside the hatch. This tank is ridiculously awesome. I mean, mere words cannot express how huge it is. Uh, compared to Adam to our next Carl Garage, it doesn't look that big, but to put it in some sort of perspective, we could not drive this out of the building if it had a door and if the tank had an engine because it is just too big. The building had to be built around the tank. The vehicle itself was prototype hull number one, merged with the turret of destroyed vehicle number two. The turret had serial number number one, so what you actually have is the prototype hull and the prototype turret now married together. All the impact marks you see on it, they are almost entirely from German testing in Kummersdorf. Uh, the one exception you will see right there on the very front slope is apparently from a 122mm shell, so I am told. Giving an impression of the scale, look at how thick the armor joint is here. Compared to my little Samsung, it's absolutely massive. This goes on to the track guards, which are well protected, and just for good measure, you can also place spare track links on front. It gets even worse if you go around the side. As you come around the side, the next thing you see is the massive side skirts. And as a tanker, the first thing, of course, that comes to my mind is, well, how the hell do you do track maintenance? There's no access ports. You can't swing the side skirts off. In fact, the only track maintenance you can routinely do is if you go right back around to the front, you can tension the track. The uh, track is tensioned, the idler wheel moves forward by use of a large screw bolt there. And that's all you can do, forwards and backwards, any other track maintenance, you have a problem. And so we move to the suspension, a vertical volute suspension system. Where have you heard that before? The difference though is in this case, it's mounted on uh, double arm cranks. So there are four wheels per bogey but uh, if you look at the drawings of them, you'll see that there's a hinge here uh, that the bogey system works on. You'll see the hammer and sickle on the side here. Now what this was, was a bit of cunning German subterfuge. They painted this, and you'll see this on the Proving Ground photographs, on the side of the vehicle during testing. The theory was apparently that if an allied spy saw this huge monstrosity being tested, they would think that because it had a hammer and sickle on the side, that it was a captured Soviet vehicle and they wouldn't think it was German. I'm not sure they were going to be successful. Moving further up, you're going to see a welded over port for a pistol port. They tried using it with the MP40. It was quote unquote epic fail, according to the local historian. And they simply decided to hell with that idea. They welded it over and off they went. One thing I forgot to mention, by the way, is that there are actually mounting points on the side to lift up the entire side of the vehicle if you wanted to change a wheel or something like that. And there are photographs of this being done. Personally, I think it's simpler, just dig a big hole, get the wheel to fall into it, and you'll change it that way. Move around to the back of the vehicle, a couple of points. Now, firstly, of course, you've got the big wide tracks, 56 links per side, uh, to spread out the monstrous weight of the vehicle. And again, you can see just visually the thickness of the armor skirt, and again, to lift up the entire tank, you would have the jacks on the skirt. This little device up here would have been a flamethrower, because why not? Again, you look at the armor joints on the side of the turret, you can see how thick the turret is, and even the rear turret face is not insignificant. And there is a, a port there, so you don't have to lug your 128 millimeter rounds all the way to the top. Rest of the vehicle, fairly sparse, nothing of any great note. Now the next step is to figure out how to get up on it. You'll notice complete slab sides, ordinarily you might stand on a sprocket wheel and climb up, or you'd find a handhold on the front. There is nothing. You almost need a ladder. That's where you start to realize the tragedy that is mouse. I am inside the cooling system. In here, that's the fuel tank. The engine, 
should be under there. And there's another cooling system and fuel tank on the far side. The radio men and the driver are located in the compartment to the front and there's actually an access door that swings open to allow them to reach the engine compartment. In fact, there's so much nothing in this tank that the easiest way to get into the turret is actually to go through the engine and uh, you come into the turret from the front. So we'll do that now. So this is now the engine compartment where the big BMW 44 liter engine used to be, 1200 horsepower, apparently taken off a snow boat. To the front is the compartment where the driver on the left and the radio man on the right would sit. They have an escape hatch in the floor and this door that opens and closes it allows them to access the engine to perform basic maintenance. So next up let's uh, go into the turret. So I've come now from the engine to this where the generator would have been to create the electricity which is then passed through the two rear ports to the individual motors. I'm under the turret, the basket would have been about here, so I'm substantially further under the 128mm than it ordinarily could be. Uh, I guess I'll stand up and see what's left of the, of the vehicle. I still fit under the 128, I figure. Okay, so as it's scattered around, I guess I'll stand up here on the 75mm side of the vehicle. Uh, You'll note that the gun is being held in place by a chain or wire. Uh, the internal explosion destroyed a significant portion of the vehicle. There is a ready rack to the right hand side for 75. I count three, it's about 18 rounds. 75 millimeter is here to the right. The nice big 128, the ammunition for which is stowed to the rear of the turret. You'll be able to see the large rollers scattered around. There's a, there's a couple of these bogies upon which the massive weight of the turret is uh, resting to traverse it around the hull. As around the gunner's side, the first thing is the very large cog used to turn the turret. I would hate to think about having to manually traverse this turret. I mean, it's, uh, Conqueror was bad enough and that was only something like a 30 ton turret. For the Ford coaxial machine gun, it's coaxial but independent in elevation. There was a wonderful idea put forward to place a fixed 20 millimeter anti-aircraft cannon here, slightly at an elevation. The idea was that uh, you'd aim the turret and wait for the airplane to fly over you. The gunner's primary sight would have gone here, up through the roof, and it looks like there may have been a secondary back here. No direct vision. And as I'm looking at it, I see a very large block of wood holding the gun up as well. And of course, the last thing in here is the 128 millimeter cannon, which it's massive breach. Uh, I'd be kind of curious to know what the recoil is actually. I mean, it's a big gun, but it's a big tank. Do you think the tank would notice? Anyway, there's not much else in this tank. Unfortunately, because of the turret detonation and the fact that nobody ever bothered to try to restore it, um, sadly, this is all the inside that we can get on inside the hatch. So, uh, time to go back out and close up. So that's it. Now, according to Hillary Doyle, Mouse is the only vehicle to have had its production stopped by the strategic bombing effort. They hit the factory at Alcat, apparently, and that was the only one that could make the, uh, the vehicle. Uh, it is a bit of a shame that there's no more left of Mouse, but uh, I guess it was a war, and you take what you can get. Hope you found it informative, and we'll see you on the next one. Now, how do I get off this thing? This should be fun.